Welcome back. Now let us look at extraction of aluminium metal. And as usual, we must look at how or where aluminium is found. And I see that aluminium is the most commonly naturally occurring metal. It makes about 7% of the earth crust. And it exists as a bauxite, or which is hydrated aluminium oxide, mica ore, which is a potassium aluminium silicate, china clay ore, or also known as aluminium silicate, and uh, number four, it occurs as corundum, anhydrous aluminium oxide. The chief ore used in extraction of aluminium is uh, bauxite, the hydrated aluminium oxide. When you look at extraction of aluminium, from bauxite, aluminium is also a relatively very reactive metal and will be extracted by electrolysis and in this case we are using the Hall's cell. As earlier mentioned, the main of is bauxite, uh, that one is uh, hydrated aluminium oxide. Uh, the ore is mined by open cast mining method since it is found shallow uh, on the earth crust. The ore is cooped together with uh, silica, and silica is sand, or what you are calling the silicon four oxide, soil, which comprise of uh, iron three oxide as uh, the impurities. So kindly remember the impurities here are mainly silica and iron three oxide. The mixture is uh, first dissolved uh, in hot concentrated sodium hydroxide solution or we can also use potassium hydroxide solution. Uh, the alkalis dissolve both bauxite and silicon 4 oxide. This is because bauxite is amphoteric while silicon 4 oxide is uh, acidic. So remember the reaction taking place here are uh, an uh, alkali plus an acid or an alkali plus the amphoteric bauxite. Iron 3 oxide is filtered off as residue because it does not dissolve in the alkali. Iron, two ox uh, iron 3 oxide is basic, so it can't dissolve in the alkali again. Carbon 4 oxide is bubbled into the filter to precipitate aluminium hydroxide as residue. The aluminium hydroxide residue is filled off. Silicon 4 of that remain in the solution as a filtrate. Aluminium 3 hydroxide residue is then heated to form pure aluminium oxide. That is the equation. Pure aluminium oxide has a very high melting point of 2015 degrees Celsius. And because of this, a lot of energy is required to melt the bauxite and that's why we are thinking that the process of uh, extraction of aluminium is uh, relatively more expensive uh, than the one that we had looked at when we are extracting sodium. Therefore, it is dissolved in molten cryolite. Molten cry cryolite is used to lower the melting point to about 800 degrees Celsius cutting on the cost of uh, production. The molten electrolyte is pool cell made up of a steel tank lined with carbon graphite and an anode suspended in the electrolyte during the electrolysis. At the cathode, aluminium ions gain electrons to form aluminium metal while the oxide ions lose electrons to form oxygen gas. Aluminium is denser than the electrolyte, therefore, it sinks to the bottom of the whole cell. At this temperature, the oxygen evolved uh, at the anode reacts with carbon anode to form carbon four oxide gas that escapes to the atmosphere. And that is the equation that is taking place at the anode. Remember, our anode is made up of carbon. The anode dust should be continuously replaced from time to time. Another uh, thing making this process to be expensive, we have to keep on replacing the anode because they are used by 
they are used up when uh, oxygen reacts with uh, each. This is a flowchart of aluminium from uh, bauxite. We are starting from here where bauxite or with impurities uh, iron 3 oxide and uh, silica is crushed to increase the surface area then uh, the powdered mixture is mixed with the concentrated sodium hydroxide and this is what we are now doing this is the froth flotation process we want to increase uh, the O sodium aluminate and sodium silicate are formed as the filtrate and ion 3 oxide is formed as the residue carbon 4 oxide is added to the filtrate and here we are precipitating out aluminium hydroxide as the solid and we get sodium silicate as the filtrate aluminium hydroxide uh, hydroxide which we found as the residue is then heated to about a thousand degrees celsius and remember here this is when we add cryolite to reduce or to lower down the melting point so we form aluminium oxide aluminium oxide then undergoes electrolysis in the whole cell to form pure aluminium which sinks down in the whole cell and oxygen gas that is uh, liberated at the anode and remember that's why we're seeing that the oxygen gas most of it reacts with the anode forming uh, carbon four oxide this is the diagram showing the whole cell uh, 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 the process of extraction of uh, bauxite so this is the negative cathode we are talking about which is uh, put Round the whole cell, uh, the, the whole cell chamber. Then we have uh, the suspended carbon uh, as our anode, the positive charged. Then we are saying that uh, the molten aluminium is very heavy, so it sinks at the bottom and is eliminated as uh, molten aluminium and. Uh, the oxygen formed goes at the anode and reacts with carbon with carbon which is the anode forming carbon 4 oxide which escapes into the atmosphere and uh, this is uh, our steel tank or steel tank this red part and uh, our both the anode and cathode are made up of uh, carbon which is a uh, graphite so the only difference is that as the cathode it is aligning made throughout the whole cell but at the anode it is uh, suspended it is suspended some uses of aluminium aluminium is used in the making of aeroplane parts buses tankers furniture because aluminium is very light it is also used as uh, in making of duralium, which is an alloy which is harder and has a higher tensile stre uh, strength. It is also used in the making of utensils because it is light and a good conductor of electricity. It is also used in the making of overhead electric cables because of its of it being light, ductile, and good conductor of uh, electricity. We have several more uses which you can learn learn about them then the environmental effects of extracting aluminium from bauxite include carbon four of the gas that escapes to the atmosphere is a greenhouse gas and this causes global warming bauxite is extracted by open cast mining leading to environmental degradation uh, degradation you can imagine uh leaving the open pits that can are very dangerous even to human beings and also cause the soil erosion. Then uh, for you to test for the presence of aluminum ions in an ore, then uh, the following procedure is carried out. 
you can look at now the practice questions that will help you understand more about the extraction of aluminium and more questions will follow so kindly remember to write down all the notes draw all the all the drawings and we'll have more questions after the topic aluminium is the most abundant metal on earth however it is expensive because a lot of electricity is used to extract it aluminium conducts heat and electricity well has a low density and does not corrode this makes it very useful for aeroplanes drinks cans electricity cables and cooking pans the aluminium ore is called bauxite bauxite is purified to yield aluminium oxide which is a white powder aluminium is then extracted from the aluminium oxide the aluminium is extracted by electrolysis in this video we are going to look at how aluminium is extracted using electrolysis you should already know how electrolysis works if you have forgotten watch our video electrolysis how does it work to refresh your memory in electrolysis ions need to pass through the electrolyte and so the aluminium oxide must be made molten so that this can happen aluminium oxide has a very high melting point over 2000 degrees celsius so instead of trying to melt it the aluminium oxide is dissolved in molten cryolite cryolite is an aluminium compound with a much lower melting point than aluminium oxide and so using this reduces some of the costs in extracting aluminium the steel case is coated with graphite, providing a negative cathode. The positive anodes are immersed in the molten cryolite and are also made of graphite. Remember that graphite is a form of carbon. When the battery is turned on and electricity flows, the aluminium from the aluminium oxide in the cryolite forms at the negative cathode and sinks to the bottom of the tank. Here, it can then be tapped off as a pure liquid metal. The aluminium sinks because it is more dense than the aluminium cryolite solution. The oxygen from the aluminium oxide in the cryolite forms at the positive anode. The oxygen reacts with the carbon of the graphite, forming carbon dioxide. The positive anode therefore burns away and needs replacing regularly. This is another reason for the extraction of the aluminium being so expensive. The overall reaction is aluminium oxide to aluminium plus oxygen. Let's have a quick look at the reactions at the electrodes. At the negative cathode where the aluminium forms, the aluminium ions from the molten aluminium oxide cryolite solution are reduced. This means they gain electrons. At the positive anode where the oxygen reacts with carbon to make carbon dioxide, the oxygen ions are oxidized. This means they lose electrons. So from this video you should know that to extract aluminium, electrolysis is used. Aluminium oxide needs to be molten for the ions to move through it and so is dissolved in cryolite to lower the melting point. The anode is gradually worn away because the oxygen from the solution reacts with the carbon of the graphite anode, producing carbon dioxide, and so the anode wears away and needs to be replaced regularly.